Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue Alpine TV. In today's episode, we'll quickly look at the markets, then we'll look at Ethereum Classics fork, and we'll look at EOS and what kind of direction the price will develop. So let's jump right into uh, the market first. For the podcast listeners, we're currently looking at coin market cap and we are seeing our good friend Bitcoin at 7,300. 31 US dollars with a drop of 2%. Now, a lot of people have actually expected that the price will go back up again after we've dropped from close to 10K to close to 7K in the last couple of weeks. And um, yesterday, I think, yeah, around 12, around lunchtime, uh, Bitcoin made a huge jump from 7,100 to close to 7,400 here. And um, normally when you see these kinds of jumps, you have to be a bit careful. Like these kinds of jumps are very um, careful to trade on, especially if you believe that now the prices are going back up again. Never trust these kind of jumps and always kind of wait until the correction actually happens from this kind of jump. So normally what you want to see is, is a more natural, a more organic uh, gaining of price with healthy volume because this could very well be from one person, one organization that just wanted to buy big into Bitcoin and this is exactly what could kind of uh, give the market very, very short term a bit of power. But nonetheless, uh, if you're following a Blue Alpine research or Blue Alpine TV, um, you know that we here talk about fundamental analysis, the fundamentals. And um, for us, it's more important to research something in depth before investing into it and for and especially uh, invest into it long term and diversified. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel or the podcast. And um, yeah, let's jump right into this uh, first news story. Yesterday, we talked about Ethereum Classic. Now, Ethereum Classic was or is, uh, well, actually was yesterday um, was dealing with this kind of problem of the difficulty bump. The difficulty bump is uh, nothing else than um, the block at 5,900,000 was kind of um, called difficulty bump because after that stage, um, the difficulty of mining Ethereum Classic would uh, increase so much that mining uh, would actually become unprofitable. So um, in order to kind of save proof of work as an algorithm, um, uh, Ethereum Classic created this uh, fork. They call it ECIP1041. And the idea was that this difficulty bump would be kind of removed and um, it looks like it was successful so nothing if you if you're holding ethereum classic you won't get like an airdrop you won't get an update to the to the network or anything it will essentially just continue as is so nothing um crazy happening here um and it, what is important as well is that um while uh, Ethereum is preparing for proof of stake and, and makes all these preparations for proof of stake. Um, Ethereum Classic still doesn't believe in proof of stake. So it's still kind of running on proof of work. And there are these discussions about proof of work versus proof of stake. And yesterday I've showed you also an interesting site uh, called I think Crypto 51 or 51 Crypto um a dot app or or something like this you have to check it in in the last episode and there actually we talked about 51 percent um attacks so this is always an issue with proof of work uh, cryptocurrencies and actually here in the article it says just this week a brazilian researcher calculated that it could take just 55 million uh, us dollars just well uh, to hack ethereum classics network to make a billion us dollar profit arguing that the network's proof of work algorithm was more vulnerable to a 51 percent attack than previously assumed so even though proof of work is kind of a proven um, uh, uh, algorithm in order to to kind of uh, create value or create um, and and verify and and um, run the network you have to keep in mind that 51 percent attacks are still an important issue if you don't know what a 51 percent attack is make sure to watch yesterday's video or listen to it on the podcast where we dive in into it a bit more 
Next up, we have EOS, EOS cryptocurrency lacks price direction ahead of launch. EOS uh, says here, EOS's move from the Ethereum blockchain to its own mainnet is just a couple of days away, yet its native cryptocurrency is looking indecisive on the price chart. Now, EOS has been running as an ERC20 token for, I think, a bit more, close to a year. I, th I think it's not a year yet. And um, they are preparing to move to their own mainnet. Uh, planned was, I think, originally beginning of June. It will probably be mid to end June. And while there was this crazy run in terms of a uh, price gain, almost 500% in the last couple of weeks, um, EOS is still kind of looking shaky and not really clear on what exactly will happen. Now, what is really important and I kind of want to dive into this topic a bit more is that um, on Tuesday, so uh, yesterday or, or I think even a day before that, uh, Qihou, um 360, a China-based internet security firm, said that it had informed developers of potentially serious vulnerabilities in the platform, which now appear to have been patched. Um, and then you see here, I will link this article as well. So there have been kind of uh, important vulnerabilities, obviously for a mainnet launch, this is not really good news. Um, in, in these cases, you, you kind of want to see, and that's what we do when we do uh, our fundamental analysis, we look at how uh, responsive are the people in on Twitter and on, on social media in general. So if security flaws happen, and they will happen, it will happen with Bitcoin, it will happen with Ethereum, it will happen with EOS as well. Um, how fast are they to react? How fast is the community? How fast are the leaders of the project? and these kind of things. Now it looks like EOS's, um, uh, has been, uh, EOS's platform has been patched. So we're looking at EOS probably launching uh, onto the mainnet pretty soon. Now, whether you should invest into EOS or not, that's up to you. Um, I believe EOS is, is, is an interesting project in terms of it is held as an Ethereum killer. In my opinion, it hasn't kind of proven itself yet. Um, the airdrops on the EOS platforms, yes, are interesting for uh, investors. Um, however, I wouldn't invest into a platform just because you believe that you will receive money from airdrops. I, you have to kind of understand the technology and, and research the EOS project itself in order to kind of invest into it, in my opinion. Nonetheless, I'll be uh, kind of watching it. I will be observing EOS a bit more and also kind of will be updating our reports if something happens, if something changes fundamentally. And uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted on that. And with that, guys, we are already at the end of today's episode. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.